Welcome to my thoughts on Secret Invasion Season 1, Episode 5. Thoughts. So, yeah, this episode is called Harvest. And, yeah, so spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode, another episode that I absolutely loved. And, yeah, so we open on, you know, Nick Fury t t trying to, to convey to the present. It wasn't the Russians. Don't trust Rhodey. And it, you know, yeah, like, it's a really terrible situation. And, yeah, so Pagan questions Gravik, who kills him. And he is altering the plan, leaving Rhodey, or I guess Rava, in disbelief. I really love the long take when Nick, like, confronts... I'm gonna go with Rhodey, I can't keep track of all the names. How it's in a long take, and a lot of it is in this close-up, like, that really worked. Right, I'll, I'll briefly say, I don't... <laughs> Everything that I that I have to say about the writer strike and actor strike, you know, has been said really well by Organized Chaos and YMS. So I'm just going to link to those two videos in the description box. I I don't want to do a bad job restating something that other people have already done a really great job. But the the strike is extremely important. I'm really really glad that they're because like when you look at the the like they have such reasonable demands and the counter offers are just insulting like slap in the face but yeah so back to the episode the let's see, yeah Rhodey you know says you know I leaked the the footage of you shooting Maria and if you ever get within a hundred yards of the president you know, you will be shot. So, yeah. Things are very getting very intense. And... Let's see the... Um, right, the... the yeah. Um, uh, Sonia just lets herself in. Well, you know, the, the guy's like, tell her I'm busy. Don't worry, I I I didn't see anything, you know, and puts a gun to his head and shoots him in the leg. Now the SIS don't have a policy on killing scrolls, so what is it like? Would you do you want to talk, or would you like me to engage in my personal preference? Just yeah, I I love how chipper she is whilst saying and doing truly awful things. And, yeah, some of the scrolls try a coup on Gravik. I continue to love how brutal the action is here. They really don't hold back, and it, it's exactly the right choice. And I love a great smash cut into someone being thrown into the shot, often through, like, a wall or glass or something, gag, you know, we see it in stuff like X-Men 2, the 2004 Punisher. There's a, at least one on Burn Notice. You know, yeah, always, always happy to see one of those. And let's see, then the, um, yeah, yeah, uh, Nick and Gaia talk about, you know, did Talos lose or, you know, and, and yeah, I, I really appreciate these conversations on the show and yeah so they talk about you know what is the harvest and let's see yeah and and you know the 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 um i guess it's just one scroll one scroll and then the doctor comes up to you know sonia and is like who are you ah scrolls who would you like me to be you see I can be your bestie, or I'm also devilishly good at not being your bestie, you know, and the, the, and, and she said, you know, so, we've got quite a situation here, don't we, Nigel? No, I'm not Nigel. No, Nigel is the man who has a silencer to your neck. Ah, there he is. Yeah, <laughs> just love it, you know, because it's like, 
she had control the whole time. The fact that the other guy had a gun on her temporarily, that was nothing. Like the the and and it's it's very clever because the fact that Nigel was hidden means that the scroll would not just go in guns blazing. You know, like it's the like if you if you see several people and an, and you have the sense that at least one of them has a gun and is ready to shoot. You're not going to just walk into the situation and start talking. You're going to start shooting or maybe call for backup or something. But the fact that he thinks Sonya is the only person there, he thinks he has control of the situation. You know, she doesn't look that dangerous. And she uses that, and I love to see it. And that is a bit of a thing in, like, the, the MCU has its share of women who don't look super dangerous and actually use that to lure people to lower their guard. You know, you also have Black Widow and... I guess an argument could be made for uh, um, Scarlet Witch, although I guess everybody pretty much knows how dangerous she is from very early on. You've got Captain Marvel, just, uh, yeah. Let's see. And... Yeah, and you know she Sonia demands the the all the details, and don't leave out a damn decimal point. And and then she has this great line, you know the you know the yeah the guy's like I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot her. Oh, I don't doubt that. You're just like the men of my species. If you're not gaslighting us, you're threatening to murder us. Which you know. God, I wish that wasn't true. I really, really wish that that was just a ridiculous thing to say, but here we are, and I think it's important to have that reflected in media until it is no longer very much the case. And the... the it is also... The, it's, a, it's great characterization. Like, that is legitimately, you know, like... She's... She, the... Yeah, you know, when, when she sees a man, she, like, her mind very quickly gets to gaslighting or threatening to murder, you know, and, like, I don't know if we're going to get the details, but it sounds like she had at least one experience, you know, maybe she was with someone for years, he was gaslighting her, and it got to a point where he threatened to murder her, and now she is never going to let that happen ever again. You know, I, I feel like that's why she does what she does. You know, similar to how Nick Fury is very driven by his experiences. You know, when, when he was a kid, the seeing the how, how badly black people were treated. You know, they're, they're both trying to regain control and protect people. Which is, of course... You know, boy, wouldn't it be nice if that were true of American and British intelligence agencies in real life. And, yeah, you know, Gaia and Priscilla meet and have some, you know, I really like their conversation about, you know, the last words that they said to a man that was important to them. And... Yeah, Gravig and, and Nick talk about the harvest, and I really like. You know, I I figured that the best chance of getting Nick to settle down in one place and with me at that was to give him the three things that you know mean the world to him: a lot of security, a lot of privacy, and a lot of leather. <laughs> I mean. Someone had to say it, and no, it was a lot of light, and yeah, you know, she points out, why not stay here, you know, what what am I going to do, you know, get killed walking down a dark alley, or am I going to stand my ground here, kind of thing, you know, and, you know, just as she's saying that, the, the gunshots, and, you know, I, I know, it's just, it's a pet peeve. Why did that person shoot before having a clean shot? You know, just...
But I know, I get it, you know, Gaia and Priscilla are both supposed to live. And that I do agree with, I love both characters. But it's just, like, you know, you always, in scenes like that, you always gotta have someone who's, like, life's mission it is to carry out these, you know, uh, operations very carefully. You gotta have them screw up and make a, a rookie mistake like that. Like, they weren't moving, you know, it's not like they were... Anyway, pet, pet peeve, not a big deal for, for the show, but yeah, love a good siege scene, love them, you know, back to back with armored vests and, you know, a, a handgun and another shotgun, just love the shotgun representation on this show, and at that range, yeah, a shotgun is going to be extremely, because you know, you know that they can't, like, the, um, the room that Gaia and Priscilla are in, you can't really, like, get a, a sniper shot on that kind of room. You know, it's too... So, so yeah, a shotgun at that range, you know. Let's see. And, and to be clear, I'm not, like, a gun owner. Real, in real life, I believe in gun control, but... It's, you know, yeah, it's, it's a guilty pleasure. In, in fiction, I, I love good gunplay. And, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that, there, like, there's times where it almost looks like they're going to fail, and you have the detail that they do have to reload. And one of, you know, one is shooting, one is reloading, and that's, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm really, really glad that they do that instead of, I, 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 I've gotten really, really tired of watching movie gunfights where they don't apply tactics even if the characters should know tactics. And yeah, one person shoots, another reloads. That's, you know, yeah, it makes a ton of sense. You know, if both shoot at the same time, both might run out of bullets at the same time, and suddenly you have no one to fend for you while you're reloading. And, yeah, so Nick arrives in Finland, and we do see that even the the Finnish have the, you know, he would be finished if they caught him. They they have the, the thing that says, you know, do not, you know, yeah, he's, you know, he's internationally wanted. And, uh, yeah, turns out that the old widow's, widow's veil covers only the face you know, which we haven't seen the new. I guess that might be a hint that something is coming because like the the widow's veils we've seen, you know, it's the you have at least one in let's see Captain America the Winter Soldier, the movie. You have at least one Captain America the Winter Soldier, the miniseries, and at least one in Black Widow, the solo movie, and each of those only cover the face. So yeah, like it, it does make a lot of sense that they would have. Yeah. And I guess it's maybe a question why didn't Well actually no, I guess, you know, Gravig and Rhodey don't want Nick to be completely incapable of travel because it's they they don't know where he has to harvest, but they know there's a chance it's not in America, so... Or I guess, wait, were we in Russia? I'm not good with geography. But anyway, you know, wherever they used to be. And, yeah, we get the, the detail that, yeah, you know, the Battle of Earth, all the Avengers spilt at least some blood, including Carol Danvers. And it, it's been a little while since I watched, you know... Endgame, though I have watched it multiple times, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, I do believe that there's at least a little bit of blood, like... It, I, I feel like there's a little bit of blood on her face, at least after she, you know... The, the absolute badass, you know, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thanos, who has, you know, an almost complete Infinity... Actually, yeah, at that time, he does have a complete Infinity Gauntlet, and then he removes one to get to to knock her away but yeah yeah you know they all spilt at least some blood it was collected and just holy crap um 
So there's almost definitely no way that Gravik himself will actually be wielding all of the Avenger superpowers. I guess maybe, are they... I guess if Nick has another machine and access to it, he could give it to... I don't think they're going to give it to Sam Jackson unless they're going to have like a stunt double do most of it, but I could see how they could like have someone else to take on all the powers because like the big thing with you know why why don't the avengers show up in the show money you know basically like they wouldn't yeah um right and i i forgot to, to mention i i quite like seeing um i think his name was mason again who was also in the the black widow solo movie and yeah liked him there like him here It'd be cool if he showed up again. Um, the line he had about... I, I like the thing with... Get a nap. You, you seem grumpy. you know. And the thing with... You know, he gets him the, the widow's veil. And it's like... You're, you're welcome. You know, and, and the... But yeah, the, the line about like... Oh, you know, I, you know... Yeah, we both prefer a helicarrier. But it's on mothballs. That was what they said in Age of Ultron. That movie still ended with a helicarrier. So that... Those words don't have the same weight that they might have had before that movie. So, yeah. Um, anyway, not that I'm. I, it's not that I personally expect a helicarrier will show up in the final episode. Although, I guess, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. And and you know, so why aren't the Avengers on this show? And you know, if real life, it's like, you know, they don't want to. Yeah, they're. The big stars are mostly for the movies, but the, the, yeah, you know, Nick says, oh, because it's personal, it's a, yeah. And I like the line, dead men need options, that's, that's quite good, and yeah, so the gravestone hit the vial, and, you know, and it's, it's a great, like, his, his, like, I think it was his, yeah, his, his breath, you know, so it's, you know, literally no one else can, you know, and, and you might say, oh, but it doesn't look like, you know, it's not, is it, is the material that difficult to break? I'm willing to bet he had, like, a, a thing installed where if you, like, try to break it open, the vial gets crushed or something, and that's it. You know, if you don't have, like, if, if the, the DNA gets smeared all over the, the, the the stone or whatever and actually yeah come to think of it there might even be a thing that like you know maybe it maybe it cooks the vial and at that point you're completely screwed you're not going to get any dna out of the, you know so so yeah but yeah you know breathing on the on the thing you know a a um you know dna recognition thing so that only he would be able to get it even a scroll posing as nick fury you know talos Posing as Fury wouldn't have been able to get it, uh, you know. I'm, I'm. Hmm, actually, I guess we don't know if they can affect. No, I think I think that is the idea. Like the eye, you know. We know they can change eyes. They can imitate voices. I don't think they'd be able to, you know, on on that kind of level. Anyway, but yeah, and you know, he has another one where he gets out the eye patch and the gun. And we're back to a more classic look for Nick Fury as we head into the finale and see I just got done watching the the videos of Jesse Gender and uh, I'm, I'm sorry dude I do not remember your name right now but I'll have it momentarily Tyler Calvert and you know neither of them are particularly excited for the for the finale and that's fine you know treats their own I personally am. I, I'm really like, you know, the, the big thing is still, I, I have a bad feeling that by the end of the finale, you know, the takeaway is going to be the incredibly toxic idea that, you know, if you let in refugees, at least some of them are going to be so dangerous that you probably should have rejected them kind of thing, you know, and yeah, really, really not a fan of that. That was something that I and many others were worried about the moment that we heard that they were going to do Secret Invasion in the MCU at all, given that the MCU scrolls, as we learn in the Captain Marvel solo movie, 
are refugees, you know, it, yeah, um, I would, I would love to be proven wrong, I really, really hope that the finale has something in there that really underlines that the, cause, cause like, at the end of the day, if the thing you put in there is, like, if you don't, tr you know, if you treat refugees really badly, yeah, things might go bad. But if you treat them with humanity, you know, they become productive members of society. And I, I mean, we don't know what most of the new wait the the million scrolls on earth are they all in new scroll no i mean they can't all be in new scrolls i feel like what they could do in the finale is say yes it's true that you know this this small percentage of the scrolls on earth were dangerous however look at all these scrolls the you know like maybe 80% of them or something were actually contributing members of society. You know, they pay taxes, they have jobs, they save lives, you know, some are doctors, you know, various things. Just, yeah. I hope that's what happens. I don't really trust the, the you know, the powers that be at Marvel to, to make the right call on that. But, yeah. Um... But that is basically, that is that is my main issue with the show. It's a big one, but it is possible they can fix it in the finale. And yeah, other than that, I, I really, really enjoyed the show. Um, yeah, I th they, they, they're doing a really good job with the, the spy thing. Like, a lot of double-crossing, a lot of twists and turns, and just, yeah. Um... Yeah, and, like, I, I really appreciate, you know, so the lead-in to the finale is not like, oh, you know, we're going to get together this big, powerful team or something. No, it's Nick Fury and Gravik. Gravik has a lot of leverage. Nick Fury has the vial, but he doesn't, you know, neither of them are going to give in. Neither of them are going to, like, just go willingly, you know, so... Yeah, it's it's a that's a that's a great like spy setup, you know, where like the the yeah, I guess I'm not sure. No, yeah, there's been one I I suppose there's only really been one of the mini series that was like let's get a big force together. That was the first season of What If. I think the others have mostly been other stuff but even so it is legitimately it's just it's you know like nick he's good at what he does but he is also you know he's one person he doesn't have any superpowers or anything you know it's yeah actually it is the only of these where the lead into the finale is not here's someone with superpowers who's gonna you know in a lot of the shows we already you know we we'd already met the person with superpowers but it was very much, you know, uh, you know, Scarlet Witch, Bucky, Loki, and Sylvie. You know, each of these, Ms. Marvel. Each of these, it's been the protagonist has superpowers, or one of the protagonists at least has superpowers, and heading into the finale, you know, they're definitely going to use their superpowers in some kind of big heroic way, and here, you know. Gravik has superpowers, but Nick doesn't, and there's not really, yeah, so, so just, yeah, really, really love that. It feels like the kind of story that you'd see in a piece of, like, spy media that has nothing to do with superpowers. Like, if, yeah, it feels like the, the, the last chunk of a Jason Bourne movie or something, you know, just, yeah, really, really love that, really appreciate that they didn't, like, you know, the, the, yeah, there are some superpowers over the course of these five episodes, but they don't like it. They don't let it take over. You know, if, if if what you want out of the MCU is superpowers, there's plenty of. You know, you you have all the movies. You know, the the almost all the movies have superpowers. So, yeah, I I really appreciate that they took this different approach here. But yeah, 
uh, here's hoping that the finale will address the one major issue and yeah um, I guess by the f by the end of the finale it would probably be good if we have a clear answer like I guess it's probably just going to be that by the end of it either they outright say or they hint at that Nick is gonna go back onto Saber afterwards because like we already know that you know he's on Saber for at least some of the, you know ba based on the trailer for at least some of the the Marvels so yeah anyway um, you know and there's definitely there's no indication that this show is taking place um, after the Marvels have already happened and yeah and at the start of this they were talking about it's been a long time since he left Saber so anyway yes um, really excited to see the finale and yeah that is it for this one make mine Marvel support the strikes